we're all in here to talk about the eSIM, right? It gives us so many possibilities. But we would like to focus on a little bit of a different angle. We would like to give it a little bit of a different twist, a different flavor. We would like to see and show how we could, through the eSIM, provide lower costs so you can be cost efficient and, at the same time, reach your environmental goals. And this last point is extremely important. Yeah? It's, it's not only your personal goals, it's also authorities will be demanding that you, as companies, go ahead and prove that your suppliers are cutting emissions. We will give you the tools for that. So two specific things. Before we do that, I'm going to highlight some of the numbers that Pablo showed. Okay, once again, 84 devices today, smartphone devices that can go for eSIM. So 84 devices, smartphones. But to that, you have to add around, the total the number is around 150 if you add iPads or pads, you add computers, and, and so on. So 150 devices already in the market. That is today. Tomorrow, if we take these numbers, and, and as given by Pablo before, 50% of all transactions of smartphone connections will rely on eSIM technology. That's not many years away from now. And to put a number on that, that is six to nine billion being conservative. Six to nine billion. Did you know how many transactions there was in 2022? 17 million. Okay? And that was an exponential growth. We're talking 6.9 billion. But if we focus once again today, we will see that 10% of operators are already going through an eSIM as a priority. With this, that means I go to a shop, I bring my phone. The first thing they're going to do, they're going to look at the phone, see if it's eSIM enabled, and they're not going to give me a physical SIM card. They're going to connect me directly with the eSIM. 10%, one out of every 10. <clears throat> like I said, we're going to show the, the potential of the eSIM. There's a whole bunch of new use cases. There's a whole bunch of them. Okay? We can spend hours talking about that. We also see new connected devices. With new connected devices, we're not only talking about the phone and the watch. There's the pad, there is the, the computer, and it goes beyond that. There will be the car, there will be the air conditioning unit, basically everything except your electric toothbrush. That's not going to happen. Better user experience. Uh, I, I just jumped one. New sales channel. This one is also very important. We're going digital. Yeah? Just imagine the possibilities this open by going digital. No longer physical. No longer have to go to a shop. And this is the same case with the uh, new user experiences. Yeah? No longer having to go to a shop. You can change completely your marketing speech and your distribution channel. Completely. But like I said, we will focus on these two, which is cost savings and the uh, environment. So we have done a small table here to show you what it implies to go with a SIM card. Yeah? This is, first of all, we have to deal with the manufacturing. And with the manufacturing, we have to talk about it's not only that factory and the people doing the card, it's all the things behind that. We have to ship all the stuff to one factory. We produce it. All right? After you produce it, you have the next big thing, and that is you have to distribute it. You have to have the logistics behind it. And this is Dante's Inferno for uh, the logistics team. I mean, from here, you will have to take the product, ship it probably to another country, because factories, SIM card factories, are located in very geographical areas. So you'll have to ship it to another country. You probably have to go to customs. You'll go to a, to a warehouse. From that warehouse, unless you're a small country like Liechtenstein, you will have to go ahead and ship it to a regional warehouse, then to a store, and etc. In all this transportation, you will have also to 
be careful with the fact that you have a packaged good. That packaged good is now not only a SIM card, it's a SIM card with your logos and so on, because after all, we do marketing. You'd never get a, a SIM card with anything. And that is packaged in paper and in plastic. Hopefully, there's more paper than plastic, and hopefully that plastic is recycled. But anyways, there is the packaging, very important. And with this patch packaging, it's prone to damage. I mean, you're again talking paper, plastic. This can get broken. This can be teared. In the transportation, it might even get lost. You know, so we have these issues just now with the SIM card. Finally, we have obsolescence. And with that, we mean we just spoke about all this big transition from when we produce the SIM card. So uh, for the people in the SIM card business, you have first this BAP, which you have to create, and then all the way to it comes to the consumer. That takes time. And probably the operator will already have said, OK, I have new services to add. I have new roaming lists to add into the card. So that, that card has a great possibility of being obsolete from the very beginning. Now, what can we do with eSIM? And iSIM, by the way, it's the same use case, right? We basically take away all these um, blocks that you see behind. No, no transportation and so on. Yeah, this is, this is pretty easy, no losses on the way. But we're still left with three very important blocks. Yeah? Still obsolescence is there, huge problem. We have profile inventory management, and we have the eSIM generation and download. This last one, there isn't much you can do. I mean, you have to do it. So Idemia, through its innovative technology, we want to go ahead and do a different step. What else can we do to reduce that cost? What else can we do to be a little bit more efficient? And uh, well, I think we came up with a wonderful three products that we will be showing very soon. And you will see here how obsolescence is out and how profile inventory management is cut to the minimum. And how do we do that? That's with just-in-time eSIM profile generation. In other words, any profile, any one that you have, can be updated at any time before the download or actually during the download. We will give you an explanation how we do this. I mean, if you were to divide this, we, we, we achieve this, by the way, with our digital profile uh, factory. We have three main segments. Yeah? We have the eSIM profile dynamic adaptation, we have the customization, and we have the reprocessing. Uh, it's three different segments. Let me just go ahead and explain a little bit about what we do in the dynamic adaptation. Because, I mean, it's a wonderful world, word, dynamic adaptation. But what does it really mean? Well, it basically means your process is going to get much simpler. That's what it means. I'll give you a couple of use cases. Imagine that you have the profiles. Yeah? You, you, you probably have many different profile types. You have prepaid, you have postpaid, you might have some enterprise, you might have uh, MVNOs, for example. And finally, you might have 4G and 5G, all depending on technology. So you have this massive range of profiles. What we are suggesting here is that why? Why not go to one single profile? One generic profile, you know? So we really keep stuck keeping units to a bare minimum, one profile, and adapt to that. So I'll also further increase that. So we have put it in our system. We put that one single profile. And the next step is that you do business rules, very simple business rules. I'm going to give you an example of the 4G and 5G. Imagine a user is uh, downloading a, a, a profile. They are actually, OK, a new user has come in, and they're downloading a profile. Our system can detect if that user is using a 4G or a 5G phone. If it's a 4G phone, like I'll just give another example, like an old uh, Pixel uh, version 3 or something like that, why are you going to give him a 5G um, profile? It makes no sense. You will disturb the customer. So, Automatically, the system will download 
the 5G, it will recognize and it will download that 5G profile for the 5G user. It will download a 4G for a 4G user. This is an automatic process, seamless for the end customer. Then we have eSIM profile customization. You might be thinking, why? Why would I want to customize? Why would I customize an eSIM? What's, what's the point of that? Well, uh, there's, there's, I'm going to give you three examples. There's many more. Huh? But uh, I'll give you very th three quick ones. The pin. I mean, I can only guarantee you one thing with the pin, that in two months, that subscriber will have forgotten that number. Uh, it's the classical one. Yeah? So why not allow the subscriber to put that pin when he's asking for the eSIM? So this is exactly what the system can do. Okay, you just have the subscriber put in, and automatically he will get the, the pin. That is something that he can remember. You might even want to monetize this. Another thing that you could potentially monetize, well, why not? Uh, you, enterprises. You work with enterprises. The SPN, you can put the company name instead. Yeah, that, that's another possibility. And finally, we also have the IMC. And I'm going to give you an example of Brazil. Yeah, th there's many other ones. But in Brazil, it's divided by MC sets, every region. Meaning that if you're in Sao Paulo, you can't get the same MC like in Salvador de Bahia. Yeah, they are they're in different ranges. Well, here it's fine. Somebody goes into a shop or logs in through the computer, you will automatically detect where that person is and get that MC set for them. So automatic. You take a whole full process, inventory process, out of the way. And finally, we have the eSIM profile reprocessing. Reprocessing is also another word for recycling. Yeah? And um, I'll give you another example. Imagine an operator asks for 100 profiles. They generate 100 profiles, 100,000, of course, yeah? or 200,000, or a quarter million, whatever it be. They generate that. Then what happens if at that moment you decide, OK, I want a new service? I again want to change the PLM list. Whatever file, I want to add an applet. You have basic two options. One, update that subscriber with an outdated profile, or throw it away. Those are your two options today. So why not just go into our system? Just say, OK, update that one unique profile. Remember that one unique profile. Update it to one, and next subscriber that calls in, does a transaction will be updated automatically with the right one. Furthermore, any, further, uh, any future subscribers will also be updated. So this is what we mean with, uh, with uh, on-time uh, profile generation. We mentioned the word recycling there. It takes me to the next point, scalability. I mean, before we go and talk about environment and so on, you need to scale correctly. You need to scale correctly from the first day. You will not have the same traffic today like you will have in two years. You will not have the same traffic today also like on Black Friday. Yeah? You need to be able to scale. And that you can only achieve with a cloud uh, platform. So we mentioned about the SKUs. So um, we, we also highlighted how we can reduce that from a whole bunch to one single one. And um, well, that clearly is the first indicator on how to improve the environment footprint. However, this goes on. I'll give you another example. We monitor at all times our emissions. Yeah? All the time, we monitor and correct them where it is. We analyze them and monitoring. So this job is already being done from us to, to our customers. The capacity to scale, I briefly mentioned, this has to be cloud. There's no other alternative. It has to be cloud. But, and that's my final point. It is not, it's, it's important that whatever cloud you go for, they're not all the same. We have different cloud providers. And with this one, we believe we chose the strongest one. We have worked with them many years. And I'll give you some very, fact, very strong facts. Again, once again, you will have to demonstrate to your authorities that you are doing something for the environment, or your suppliers are doing something for the environment. And here we have three use cases, yeah? Uh, or th three cases. There's something 
a catchy name, 100, 100, 0. That basically means 100% of the time, we're using 100% of recycled energy with zero carbon emissions. That goal is for 2030, but we're definitely going towards that. One that is much closer. Next year, we will have used, again, again we, when we say we, it's the Azure data centers where the IDEMIA um, platforms are in, installed. Okay? Is 95%, this is only next year, this is less than a year away, 95% of the water used for cooling will be recycled water. And there's a full reduction of that water. And finally, and this is a really hard statistics, 72 to 98% less carbon emissions. And we know this because we have gone from having owning physical data centers to going to cloud. We've gone through this experience, 72 to 98%. To summarize a little bit, ESIM is a disruptive technology. It will change how people connect, how objects connect, and also very significantly, the number of objects that are connected. However, to, full, to fully measure the full potential of the ESIM, you have to find the right partner. One right partner that can give you resilience, that can give you cost effectiveness, that can help you ease the whole process that is environmental friendly. That's a nice equation, but there's one word missing out of here. One key word is definitely missing from that equation. So we're talking resilience, security, scalability, but there's one word missing, one that is hyper important, one that I would say priceless. One word that could help your company flourish over time and with trust, or could sink your company in two hours. And that is security. Yeah? Hugely important. It can really sink anything in around two hours. Idemia, by default, is a security company. We do anything with governments. I mean, passports, biometric controls, access, anything. We do financial sector. We work with the financial sector. But overall, from telecom, we have been there with since inception. And inception, I mean back 20, 30 years, we have supplied billions of people with uh, connected, uh, secure connectivity. However, even a company like Idemia, with this track record, cannot do this alone. The world has changed. There's a digital revolution. There's a cloud revolution. Once again, we need the strongest partner. The strongest, there's no second. We need the strongest partner. And that partner we have chosen for, for some time, and we worked for the last two, three years, is Microsoft.